Today is the Feast of the Annunciation, the day we commemorate the Incarnation, the moment in time when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. As we journey through Lent to grow closer to the will of the Father, we pause to reflect once again upon this most sacred moment in salvation history, when the second person of the Blessed Trinity stepped down from heaven and took on human flesh that we might share in the life of the Trinity for all eternity. When the angel Gabriel visited Mary to announce to her the Incarnation, which was the will of God to bless all the world through her, Mary's response was her fiat, let it be done unto me according to thy word. And as we know, with Mary's full and free participation in the divine will, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Mary's fiat echoes the fiat that is God's very own language of creation. Remember that when God created all things, he simply spoke them into being. With God's own fiat, all things came to be. Let there be light, and so there was light. In fact, through each movement of creation, we hear God pronounce his fiat over and over again. Let there be. For the word of God is so powerful that as he speaks, whatever he speaks comes into being. And the word of God is not just an abstract concept. Jesus is the internal word of God. The first lines of John's gospel hearken us back to the first words of Genesis so that it is very clear to us who Jesus is. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. Do we ever stop and think that our own very existence is a result of God speaking us into a being? Uniquely and personally and lovingly, God spoke each of us into being through his son Jesus, the eternal word. We are not just here randomly. We have been called into being for a purpose and our lives have meaning. We are chosen and we are loved. As we celebrate today's Feast of the Annunciation, let us take time in our Lenten journey to reflect upon the fiats that have caused our existence and our salvation, and then let us echo these fiats in our own life. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. Let us humbly cooperate with God's will in our lives, not seeking grandeur or glory for ourselves, but like Mary, through the hidden docility of our hearts, Allow God to work through us to bless the world by our lives in the way that he intended to bless the world when he first spoke us into being. With all the craziness going on around us, we can feel like the world is spinning out of control. But God has a plan, an eternal plan that will not be thwarted, an eternal plan that stretches beyond time and space, that springs forth from his eternal word, that brings us life and blessing. For as John continues in the opening of his gospel, what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. As we journey through Lent, growing deeper into the will of God, let us be reminded that the darkness will never overcome the light of Christ, shining in you and in me. As long as we, through our fiat, allow him to live in us. Just as the Blessed Mother said, let it be done unto me according to thy word, and allowed the word to take flesh within her and dwell among us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen.